In today's video, we're gonna talk about Matt Bark. Now this dude was a prodigy since a kid. And even though ultimately, I'm sure things didn't really work out exactly as he planned. One thing I really do admire about Matt, he stuck to his script all the way through. And it can be a little bit confusing, but sometimes life sends mixed signals. Because in this case, Matt probably would have benefited from pivoting just a little bit. Either way, he's got a pretty interesting story, man. Y'all kick back, enjoy. Let's dive in. Yeah, you never know. Matt Barkley grew up in California and went to the illustrious Martyr Day High School. Other attendees include Matt Leinart, Colt Brennan, who was actually Matt Leinart's backup, and Todd Marinovic. Anyway, 2005, a few years after Matt Leinart and Colt Brennan was gone, in steps true freshman Matt Barkley. He became the first true freshman to start from day one at Martyr Day since Ty Marinovic. Matt Barkley played okay as a freshman, throwing for about 1,700 yards, 10 touchdowns, but he then got hurt in the playoff, suffering from a broken collarbone. Fun fact, the cat that broke his collarbone would later become his teammate at USC. It was linebacker Allen Bradford who went on to play a few seasons in the NFL. And I hate to get off track here, but this one's totally worth it, man. Allen Bradford played both ways in high school, right? He rushed for nearly 2,000 yards as a senior and recorded 157 tackles, 12 sacks, and four forced fumbles in that same year. He went on to USC like we talked about, played with Matt Barkley, got drafted as a running back, and then ended up playing multiple seasons in the NFL as a linebacker. Didn't have a super productive NFL career, but still, I thought that was worth mentioning. Now, Matt Barkley would start all four seasons at Modern Day, but his actual breakout year came in 2007. During his junior campaign, he threw for over 3,500 yards, along with 35 TDs, and dude was a big deal. He won the Gatorade National Player of the Year Award. He also became Gatorade Male Athlete of the Year. He was the first non-senior to win these awards. This dude was on another level, bro. He was the first modern day quarterback to be permitted to call his own play. And mind you, modern day had the same coach for 20 years. So he coached a ton of great quarterbacks. Now to be honest, Matt Barkley was probably always gonna stay in California. He was recruited by a ton of schools, but the only two that were really in the running was UCLA and USC. But his pops went to USC. Also, his cousin ended up going to USC. I think his younger siblings ended up going to USC. The USC fam. Not to mention Matt Leinard, who came from the same high school, went to USC, won a national championship, Heisman Trophy, had that magical run there. But after that amazing junior season, turns out Matt's senior year didn't go so well. That's actually foreshadowing something else later in the video. Anyway, Matt Barkley's touchdown total fell down pretty dramatically, only throwing 23 TDs and 18 interceptions as a senior. Modern day finished eight and four, which was obviously not considered a great season for them. And it was nowhere close to the expectations that they must have had after having a national player of the year coming back to play his senior year. Either way, seeing as how Matt started all four years, he became modern day's all time leader in passing yards in a career. He passed for 9,471 yards during his time there. He went on to win co MVP in the Under Armour All American game and was subsequently raised back up to the number one quarterback in his class after falling all the way down to number 10 during his senior season. He graduated high school a semester early and was therefore able to compete in the spring for the starting job at USC. He had a good spring practice and was able to jump up to number two on the depth chart. And that was all it took for your boy Mel Kuyper to just jump out the window and declare that Matt Barkley would be the number one pick in the draft, you know, when he did decide to leave school. But that lets you know how great a prospect Matt Barkley was, and Mel's prediction wasn't completely out of bounds. We'll talk about it later. When the fall came, Matt Barkley did end up jumping one more spot and getting that starting job. And this dude was making things happen that never happened before. Like I said earlier, in high school, no true freshman has started since Ty Marinovich. That was like maybe a couple decades early. Now at USC, no true freshman has started the opener at the quarterback position ever. Matt became the first one to do it. They played San Jose State in that first game and Matt played pretty well, throwing for 233 yards and a touchdown. He completed 15 of 19 of his passes and of course USC won San Jose State. Now the next game was versus Ohio State and Matt actually led a late fourth quarter 
86 yard scoring drive, leading USC to a victory in that game as well. Unfortunately, Matt got hurt during that Ohio State game and USC fell to an unranked Washington. After Matt came back, he would go on to lose two more games and USC would go on to win the Emerald Bowl. Matt threw for 2,700 yards, 15 touchdowns with 14 interceptions. Not the greatest year. Now the following season, 2010, USC wasn't very good under new coach Lane Kiff. The team went eight and five, but there's a very good reason for it. This was the first year under the sanctions that they got hit with due to, you know, the Reggie Bush stuff. Now the juniors and seniors had free reign to transfer. So what you end up with is a team with a bunch of underclassmen. Obviously they're not gonna be world beaters. It just doesn't work like that in college football. And they had a two year postseason ban anyway, so it didn't really matter, but they finished eight and five. Now here it was, USC was in all this trouble. Matt Barker could have easily transferred, set out a year, and played out his college days somewhere else, but he stuck to his script, man, and that's admirable. He finished the season with 2,800 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, which was obviously a huge, huge improvement from his true freshman year the year before. In 2011, USC was much improved. They had a two-loss season, but of course, they were still banned from the postseason. Matt Barkley actually had an amazing statistical season, though. He set a single game school record for passing yards with 468. He also set a school touchdown record in a single game with six TDs. Later that season, he tied his own record, throwing for six TDs again versus UCLA in a 50 to zero massacre. He ended up throwing for 39 touchdowns that year, which was a Pac-12 all-time record. He had a 39 to seven touchdown to interception ratio and probably the craziest stat, bro, he had a 69% completion percentage doing all that stuff we just talked about. Now at this point, it looks like Mel Kuyper's way too early prediction was fairly on point. Matt was easily seen as a top 10 prospect in the 2012 draft. Now he wasn't gonna go number one because he had Andrew Luck RG3 in that draft, but he was a sure first round. But he elected to return to USC for his senior season. And fans and analysts always cheer anytime a kid makes this decision, but they never consider, or at least they don't talk about the risk, man. The monumental risk that you take when you come back for your senior season after already being projected as a first round pick. I say it every time, there's little to no upside returning for your senior season after you're already projected as a first round. But in Matt's case, I get it. USC was banned from postseason play during his sophomore and his junior season. Coming back would finally give him an opportunity to really play for something big in the postseason. Not only that, but he was the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy now. Not only that, but had he had a year just similar to his junior season, he was gonna be the for sure number one pick, like the guy instead of one of the guys in the 2012 draft. And that might not seem like a huge thing, but again, Matt was a prodigy, man. He's been shooting for the stars since the very beginning. You don't come in and start as a true freshman at these powerhouse programs as his high school and his college was if you're just okay with settling for second place. Matt wanted it all. That's how he had navigated his entire career and to this point, it had worked out for him. So I cannot judge him for sticking to that same script now. Unfortunately, this time, it just didn't work out. The 2012 USC Trojans would go on to lose five games. Matt would run into another future NFL running back who happened to have the same initials as the first guy. First guy was Alan Bradford. This guy was Anthony Barr. UCLA game, which USC did lose. Anthony Barr, bam, separates Matt's shoulder. Matt's college career is done. With his not so great senior season and his new injury, Matt will fall from the first round pick all the way down to the fourth round where he was picked up by the Philadelphia E. During Matt's first three seasons in the league, he amassed 300 yards, no touchdowns, and four interceptions. In 2016, he got another opportunity starting six games for the Chicago Bears, throwing for 1,600 yards, eight touchdowns, and 14 picks. Fortunately for Matt, man, he's still on the Arizona Cardinals roster as of today. So he's still employed in the NFL. Now, being a prodigy that he was, I'm quite sure his NFL career did not turn out exactly like he wanted. But compared to a lot of the other guys we've done, the fact that Matt's still on an NFL roster beats 
you know, the careers that a lot of these guys have ended up having. Matt's known for his work visiting orphans in Nigeria and building homes in Haiti. He had his first son in June 2015, and you don't even really have to ask what school he's gonna go to. Matt didn't have great success while he was at USC, but I still feel like his legacy should be pretty good, man. He stuck it out with that team through thick and thin and was punished for some stuff that wasn't his fault and he didn't tuck tail and run. He fought to the very end and gave up a first round pick to try to get USC back to a national champion. He ultimately failed, but in my opinion, it was a damn noble effort. That gotta count for something. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go, yeah.